Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to episode number 18 of the Everything NYJ podcast. How you guys doing today? I hope you guys are staying cool. It's like almost like a heat wave here on Long Island. I know like other parts of New York and New Jersey, it's the same thing. It's really hot out. It's going to be a really long, hot summer. I can guarantee that. And thank you guys for tuning in today. Thank you guys for checking out the video. If you guys do like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Everything NYJ YouTube channel. It really helps me out. And I can continue to make more videos for you guys. All right, so it's the dead period of the NFL, right? Right before training camp, we have a couple weeks to go. There's really nothing ever going on around this time of the uh, this time in the offseason, right? After OTAs, after mini camp, it's the dead period, right? Maybe there's a couple signings here and there, but even that, you know, really nothing too crazy, really nothing too noteworthy going on around the league. So we're going to get into a couple different things today, right? We're going to start off with um, talking about how the Jets signed Morgan Moses, and then we're going to get into the Take Flight uh, 2021, whatever it's called, the um, the four point the four part uh, series from the Jets. And then we're going to get into a couple uh, questions, right? A couple fan questions. that you, If you guys have a fan question, all you have to do is tweet them to me at EverythingNYJ on Twitter. And most likely, I'll use it on the show, right? So let's get into it, shall we? All right, so obviously the Jets signed um, former Washington football team, or Redskins, whatever you want to call it, offensive lineman Morgan Moses, right? And this news broke Friday night while I was at work. And, you know, anytime there's a big signing or anything crazy going on with the Jets, I'm always at work. And I can never do like an instant reaction video, at least on the clock I can't. I could, but I'd probably get fired. Um, yeah, so all of Jets' Twitter has been begging for this, right? Um, for weeks now, ever since he worked out with the, uh, the Jets a couple weeks ago during OTAs. And this is the guy that we've been wanting, right? Every day you go on Twitter and it was like, have the Jets signed Morgan Moses? One of the Jets signing Morgan Moses. Today is a good day to sign Morgan Moses, right? I'm sure you guys have all seen it. The Jets really hit a home run by signing this guy, right? And it's only a one-year deal, right? It's worth about $3.6 million, but it could go up to $5.3 million with uh, playing incentives and stuff like that, right? If he plays like 80, uh, 80% more or something like that worth in snaps, he'll get 5.3, if not a little bit more. Um, the Jets actually wanted to give him a two-year deal, and he only wanted a one-year deal. He obviously wants to hit the market next year, maybe seeing if he can get like a bigger contract. Um, so basically, he's playing for a contract, right? So you know he won't be lazy this season, which is always a good thing, right? And I know a couple weeks ago on Jets Twitter, I can't confirm it, but they were saying, a lot of sources were saying that the Jets and Morgan Moses were working on a huge contract, right? It's going to be like a hefty number, something like that. So I'm kind of confused, and I, I don't really understand why Morgan Moses settled on like a one-year contract. The only thing I can think of it maybe is, you know, obviously this team is heading in the right direction, but let's let's be honest. The Jets have been a dumpster fire for the last almost 10 years, since 2015, really. So the only thing I can think of is maybe he just wanted to get, you know, let's see how it goes for one year. If I don't like it here, I can always go somewhere else. If I do like it, I could always, you know, get an extension or something like that. Um, that's really the only thing I can think of, you know, maybe you guys have other suggestions in the comments, let me know, maybe another reason, I'm not really sure what it is, but that's really like one of the only things I can think of. All right, so what does that mean for George Fant, right? Because George Fant is starting uh, on the right side of the offensive line. So Fant is most likely going to become a swing tackle, right? Which means he plays both sides of the line, right? Which is really good considering he has good experience, and there's a lot going on, like with Makai Becton, for example, right? A lot of people are getting on Makai Becton's case, you know, because, you know, he has a foot injury or something like that, and let's face it, last year, he really couldn't stay on the field too much. I mean, he was on the field a lot, but there was a lot of times he was coming out of games really banged up, or he had to come out of the game a little bit, you know, take a couple plays off, and a lot of people were kind of getting concerned, like, with his weight, and they actually asked Robert Sala this a couple weeks ago, and Robert Sala didn't really say that, like, his weight was good. So, you know, some people were wondering, maybe can this guy, like, not stay healthy? Can he not stick to a solid meal plan? What the deal is, right? So, it's good to have veteran experience possibly, you know, going to be behind Makai Becton, right? And just anybody else on the offensive line for that matter, right? It's not just Makai Becton. It's good to have a guy like George Fant, you know, maybe coming in for a couple plays here and there. Because Makai, uh, George Fant, excuse me, he does have a pretty hefty contract as well, right? I, I don't have the numbers in front of me or anything, 
But I know that he's not making chump change. That's for damn sure. So, um, you know, George Fan... Oh, I do actually have George Fan's uh, numbers. I'm sorry. I didn't even uh, see them in my notes. So it's 8.5 million with 4.45 mi uh, mi uh, million guaranteed. 400,000 per game for like a roster bonus. Like those are uh, George Fan's numbers right there. I really didn't even recognize that I put them in my notes. All right, so... What does Morgan Moses do for the Jets, right? He obviously brings veteran experience to the Jets. And, you know, the Jets have a pretty young roster. So having a couple veteran guys, you know, on both sides of the line, it's really good, right? And Morgan Moses, he's been in the league since 2014. And actually, he's coming off of his best season yet, right? So you got to be really excited, right? Morgan Moses is going to be bringing a lot. He's the guy that we all wanted. We're getting him. Possibly playing for a contract, most likely. And it's just going to be really exciting to see what he can do. You know, this offensive line went from one of the worst in the league to now possibly one of the better ones in the league. Maybe top 10, top 15. I'm not going to go ahead and say it's top 5 or anything because I really don't think it is. You know, there are still a couple question marks. You know, Connor McGovern, he needs to have a big year. Greg Van Roten, he needs to have a big year. These guys are serviceable, but they're not the best at the position. But, you know, it's enough that we'll get the job done, right? And I really like what the Jets have been doing so far. You know, they're really building around Zach Wilson. And they're putting a brick wall in front of him. And that's the one, well, not the one good thing, but one of the very good things about Joe Douglas is he understands the value of the offensive line. You know, before Makai Becton, we haven't taken an offensive lineman since 2006 in the draft. That's crazy, isn't it? So Joe Douglas, he really understands the offensive line. He understands that it all starts there. You know, you need to keep your quarterback upright. Look at Sam Darnold last year. He was running for his life. Let's hope that Zach Wilson doesn't have these same issues to worry about. Let's hope that, you know, Zach Wilson could hang out in a clean pocket, let the uh, routes develop, let the plays develop. You know, look at his first, second, third, maybe even fourth read. Give this guy the best opportunity to succeed, and I guarantee you the whole team will succeed. It's a fact, guys. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for talking about Morgan Moses. If you guys have any more questions about Morgan Moses, just let me know in the comments, or you could always, you know, tweet them to me at EverythingNYJ. So now I want to get into Take Flight 2021, and this was an amazing four-part uh, four series by the Jets, you know, an offseason with the New York Jets. And this is possibly one of the biggest offseasons in Jets history. It really is. It's definitely up there with one of them. You know, look at where we started in January after, you know, we fired Adam Gaze, we hired Robert Sala, we went through an amazing draft, we signed some amazing free agents. Look at where we are now compared to where we were in January. Completely different team, completely different culture. And this was in a really this was really an amazing documentary to watch. If you guys haven't checked it out, please go check it out. I guarantee you you guys will not be disappointed. At least I wasn't. Alright, so that production staff is amazing, right? And actually, they're actually no, um, nominated for some Emmys, I believe it is, too. They have the most Emmys out of like any sports team in New York. It's pretty crazy. Um, they did a great job, this production staff, you know, putting this all together. It was a great job, right? So episode one, you know, they kind of went over like the hiring of uh, Robert Sawa, drafting Wilson and others, you know, breaking down film, talking about uh, Zach Wilson's strength and... They kind of just went over how Robert Sala and Zach Wilson checked all the boxes, you know, what they were looking for, what Joe Douglas was looking for, you know, a high energy CEO type head coach. We heard that. That's what they wanted. That's what they got. And they wanted a quarterback, you know, he, you know, he's pretty mobile and he can make all different types of throws. You know, he could do the deep balls. He can adjust, you know, the side balls, kind of like Sam used to do. Zach Wilson, I think, is going to be a very good quarterback. You know, I'm not going to say he's going to be Rookie of the Year or anything like that, but I think he's going to be a very good quarterback. And really, you know, from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, you just want to watch him grow. You want to watch him develop. You want to watch him get better. You want them to be not making the same mistakes that they were in, you know, August, September, that they're going to be, you know, in December. You want them to be playing better. You want them to be getting better. And you want to see even the coaching staff growing as a coaching staff. You know, you want to see the coach making better decisions, stuff like that, too. So Robert Sala, you know, spoke about the team first um, in the uh, four part in episode number one, reacting to what the other teams are, you know, not reacting to what other teams are doing. That's what he was saying. He's basically saying, we're going to set the tone, you know, and it's just really exciting, man. 
Robert Sawa is going to be one of those guys, you know, we're not just going to be, it's not just going to be, you know, what is the other team doing? We're going to go out there, we're going to set the tone, we're going to throw the first punch, and we're going to establish dominant, uh, dominance early. That, that's the kind of guy that I see Robert Sala being, and that's what he was basically just saying in episode one. And then we actually had Woody Johnson come on. Woody Johnson was speaking about how he was excited to have the fans back. If you guys have ever been to a Jets game, you might actually see um, Woody Johnson walking around. He does that uh, quite often. You know, he's always taking pictures with the fans. And let me tell you, Woody Johnson's Twitter has been amazing. You know, <laughs> so then we basically capped off the first episode talking about the difficulties of scouting this year because um, obviously it was 2020, you know, with the pandemic going on. They had to go back and rewatch players' film that they were watching for a different head coach, you know. They were trying to develop players that would fit the Adam Gaze system. Once Adam Gaze got fired, now they had to go back and rewatch film. Who's going to fit the Robert Sala system? What does Robert Sala want from a head co- you know, from a uh, player? So, it, you know, it was really a difficult offseason, and I'm sure it was really hard for these scouts, man. So, basically, episode number two continued to just talk about, you know, players for the Adam Gase system, how they had to go back and rewatch it. And all the coaches expressed what they wanted from the players, which I also think was actually pretty cool. We got to hear a lot from Robert Sala, from Jeff Albrick, from Matt LaFleur. We heard what they're looking for. And, you know, we also t- they also touched on... Um, free agency, and they talked about the players that they wanted to fit their system, and they talked about how they're going to fit their system. You know, they explained that, you know, this guy can go here, that guy can go there, this guy fits because of this, this guy fits because of that. I'm not going to get into everything that they said, but if you guys haven't checked it out, you know, it's really interesting to see that we have a reason that we're bringing in players. You know, in the past, guys like Mike McCagnon, you know, he signed... You know, Le'Veon Bell, because bring on in, you know, Le'Veon Bell. A lot of times the Jets would just sign big-name players when they actually wanted to come here just because they were a big name. Maybe they weren't a scheme fit. So, um, they actually talked about Carl Lawson as well and how he had a lot of QB pressures but not really a lot of sacks. Um, They were talking about uh, Corey Davis, you know, he can make the tough catches, stuff like that. Um, yards after catch, Justin Hardy, how he's going to be, you know, a great special teams player. Uh, Joyner can play safety, but he also has experience at other positions. And just a lot of hybrid players. And if you're noticing, that's the kind of guys that we're drafting too. Especially in the later rounds, we drafted a lot of safety, cornerbacks, linebackers. They can all kind of play like the same position, right? They can all kind of help in at those positions, which is really good because we really do have a young secondary Especially on that defense. It's a young defense. And hopefully we can all grow together, man. That's really the big thing. So then we heard from uh, defensive coordinator Jeff Albrecht. He talked about uh, Quinn Williams. He expects him to step up to a top three defensive uh, tackle this year. And, man, let me tell you, I am super excited for Quinn Williams. You guys should be too. Last year, I think he really did have that breakout year. Uh, The year before that, his rookie year, he was kind of quiet. He didn't do too much. I actually, at first, was kind of regretting like that draft pick. I'm like, why did we take him at number three? And now I'm super psyched for him, man. It is super exciting to watch him come in. And we're all expecting big things from now. He's dealing like with a broken foot right now. So he's doing you know, his rehabbing and stuff like that. But he should be ready to go for training camp. Should definitely be ready to go for week one. And let's just hope that they cause chaos on that defensive line that they keep talking about. Everybody keeps saying the Jets' defensive line is going to cause disruption. They're going to cause chaos. And, you know, let's bring some quarterbacks down, man. Him and Carl Lawson, I'm super excited for. John Franklin Myers, I'm super excited for. Kyle Phillips, you know, it's a very young defensive line, and they're going to be so good if we could just all stay together. You know, this team needs to stay together. That's really the big thing. We can't be letting players go. I just think it's going to be better, man. It's going to be really good, fun defense to watch this year. It's going to be chaotic, causing chaos. I really like when they say that, man. So episodes three and four, they kind of talked about the Sam Darnold trade and how Sam Darnold is a great character guy, but they at the end of the day, they went two and 14. And I even said that in a couple episodes, you know, during that was all going on. You know, you don't finish two and 14 with a good quarterback. You know, Sam Darnold, he's great, but he was, you know, he's a great person, but he's still making rookie mistakes. I'm not going to deny that. Am I a Sam fan? Yes. Do I want him to succeed? Yes. Just maybe not on the Jets, right? Um, was he screwed? Yes. But 
if he was still on the Jets, look at it like this, man. We're going into, what, year four? And we still don't know what he is. We don't know what he is. I understand Adam Gase stunned his growth. If Sam Darnold is a good quarterback, he's going to prove it in Carolina. You know, they have a pretty good team down there. And we're going to see, man, is he a good quarterback or is he going to be mediocre at best? All right, so um, uh, where was I? I kind of even like lost my notes. <laughs> my notes are all over the place today, guys. I apologize for that. Um, the scouting staff was looking for scheme fits. You know, that's kind of like what uh, episode four was talking about, three and four. And actually, episode three had the infamous now Joe Douglas corny dad joke, right? What do you call a pig that does karate? Pork chop. <laughs> Stupid joke, but whatever. Um, then they actually kind of got a little bit more serious. They're talking about uh, uh, um, Elijah Vera Tucker, his versatility. And they didn't think that he was going to be there at 23. So obviously they traded with the Vikings to uh, pick 14. And Salah just said, you know, over the phone, be your nasty self, man. Go in here and do what you always do. We're drafting you because we know that you can get the job done. Go in there and do what you do. Be a physical, be your straight up nasty self. I love that line from him, man. He's a, a physical player, man. He's not afraid to hurt you. He'll pancake you. He'll put you on your ass. He doesn't really care. Episode four, offensive coordinator Matt LaFleur. Let me tell you, man. I love listening to Matt LaFleur. You know, we didn't get to hear too much from him during OTAs and during minicamp. He had a couple press conferences, yes, but nothing too crazy. And he was talking Wilson. He was talking Elijah Moore, um, all the, you know, yards after catch, the route running from Elijah Moore. And apparently his routes are fresh, man. They're nice and crisp. And he's going to be a really good wide receiver. I am super excited for Elijah Moore this season. Let me tell you that, you know. Um, the coaching staff kept saying, players obsessed with playing football, good character, leadership guys, they all seem to be really good guys, man. You know, we're not going to be drafting thugs and stuff like that, guys that are going to be causing problems. It's going to be really good guys that, and, you know, there's focus, they're obsessed on ball. You hear Zach Wilson, he's a film junkie. His off time is watching film. When you're not on the field, when you're not in the weight room, he's watching film. That's relaxing for him. That's his time away from football. He's even said that. And obviously, you know, we haven't seen if it's going to translate to the NFL yet. We haven't seen if it's going to translate to the field. But so far, Zach Wilson is doing all the right things. And there was a couple people saying that he had character issues back in college. You know, he's a very selfish guy. He doesn't put the team first. And that cannot be further from the truth, man. From what we have seen from him, he is all about his team. You see him hanging out with his teammates, going to games, setting up like little personal um, practices and stuff like that during off time. They're going out to eat. They're watching movies together. And you haven't seen a team this close from the Jets in a very long time. And it's super nice to see, man. The team is all buying in. There's a good culture going on. And it feels like a new time is coming. A new era in the New York Jets is here. And everybody is super excited. Everybody has bought in. And that's really important, guys. Everybody has really bought in. And I think that we're going to see a super close team this year. And I think it's really going to pay off on the field, man. Um... So that basically wraps it up for the Take Flight 2021. If you guys haven't seen it, um, definitely go check it out. I'm sure most of you have seen it by now. That's why I want to do a little episode by episode breakdown. So now I want to get into a couple fan questions, right? If you guys ever have any fan questions, like I said, all you have to do is tweet them to me. Most likely I'll use them on the show unless you guys ask me a question that somebody else used. I'm not going to repeat the same question. Um, normally, a couple times during the week, throughout the week, I'll post... You know, tweet me your questions for the Everything NYJ podcast. All you have to do is reply to them, and I will tweet, you know, I'll save them. So the first question comes from Peter Cowley Jets. Who will be the veteran quarterback? Simple question, but, man, it is one of the biggest needs on this team. Um, I don't know if they're going to sign a veteran quarterback. I really don't. You know, we're almost going into training camp. We still don't have a veteran quarterback on the team. I obviously want Nick Foles. That's the guy I want, Nick Foles. I think the Jets could make it happen if they really have to, if they really want to. Um, another person that I'm seeing a lot is Robert Griffin III. Would I be disappointed with this? No. Is he my number one choice? No. But I definitely think that they do need a veteran quarterback. They can't go into the season with James Morgan. Unless James Morgan is maybe showing you something that we don't know about. And Mike White, obviously. It's just, God forbid, Zach Wilson goes down. We don't want to be milling in games like we did with Luke Falk and, you know, all those other guys that we had when Sam couldn't play. 
we need a good veteran quarterback, and I don't think Joe Flacco is that guy. I somebody even said to me because I posted this on uh, Twitter, you know, who should be the veteran backup quarterback. Somebody said Josh McCowan, and Josh McCowan is forty one years old. I don't want to see Josh McCowan on the field anymore. Technically, he's still in the league. He's still playing. I would love him as a coach, even though the Jets don't need a quarterback coach. I would love him as a coach, but I just don't want to see him on the field. He's 41 years old. He's not the guy that I want, you know, coming in and taking a couple snaps as God forbid Zach Wilson gets hurt. So thank you for the question, Peter. Like I said, you know, Nick, uh, Nick Falk or RG3, I'd be fine with either one of those. Obviously, I do hold Nick Foles a little bit higher than I do RG3, but I really wouldn't mind RG3 either. So this one comes from Schmoozer on Twitter. Are you nervous at all on the reliance of tweener rookies, uh, linebacker safeties to fill in and start right and start right away? Um, not really. Maybe a little bit. I do wish that they would sign like a veteran cornerback just to have that ex- you know that experience, that veteran in the secondary helping the young guys out. But listen, you know, we got guys like C.J. Mosley, you know, he's going to be Marcus May. These are going to be the guys that are going to be your captains. They're going to be the voices of the defense. Um, I know that we haven't seen C.J. Mosley play in almost two years, but I'm not nervous about it. You know, if C.J. Mosley can come back and be 75% of what he was, 80% of what he was, I think we'll be okay. Um, Marcus May, obviously, he's going to be another big one. Am I nervous about it? Not really. Would I like a little more experience? Yes. But, you know, you even heard Robert Salas say that, um, you know, you don't know what these guys have until you see them play. And the only way they're going to get better is to get reps. We need them getting reps, man. So am I nervous? Not really. Um, would I like a little bit more experience? Yes. Um, this one comes from Paper GS. Who's the guy that can... Who's the guy, non-rookie, non-free agent, who's going to most likely have a breakout season? Uh, Maybe Quinn and Williams, Makai Becton, Denzel Mims. Those would be the guys I would say. And then C. George Wise 78 says, are we staying put at cornerback? Um, I don't know, man. I would like to sign a veteran, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Um... Brian Poulstow out there, Richard Sherman, uh, Steve Nelson's out there. I don't know if we're going to bring in a veteran. I, I, if we do, I think it will be probably right before training camp, but I'm not you know, really expecting that to happen. So that's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching episode 18 of the Everything NYJ podcast. If you haven't already, go check me out on Twitter. Go give me a follow. I'll follow you back at Everything NYJ. Please subscribe to the channel again if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, go Jets. Have a good day.